in Mexico, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's very important for them to discuss uh, this European situation and global uh, macroeconomic economic issues in G20 rather than going back to G7. Uh, in, in the in Cannes summit, because France is a chair of G20 and also Euro the, one of the leaders of European uh, countries, naturally when France discussed the European situation and the sol global solution, G20 is involved. But on the other hand, in Mexico, uh, Mexico is not a European country, uh, and uh, Mexico is not a uh, member of the G7. So it will be very unfortunate for the G uh, G20 that all the, uh, this European uh, situation and the current crisis is being discussed in G7, and G20 is not actively involved. Because the solution must be found uh, not only in European countries, but it's a global problem. It has a large spiral effect. Emerging economies are also involved. So it's very important. Uh, for uh, Mexico as a chair of G20 to have very actively involved in finding a solution for these important global macroeconomy issues. That's one thing. The second thing is that uh, Mexico, we hope that continue to emphasize the long-term uh, uh, issues uh, together with uh, short-term macroeconomic issues so that uh, I think development issue must be a, one of the major agenda in Mexico summit. Well, it's a good question because France has been trying to do something with respect to food security over the past year and uh, hasn't been able to come up with anything really bold in terms of reining in commodity markets or, or addressing uh, market distorting biofuel policies. Um, it's, it's only been able to come up with something called the AMIS, the Agricultural Market Information System, which is trying to put information out there uh, in agricultural commodity markets in order to smooth uh, food price spikes uh, in times of shortage. Um, moving, and this is probably all we'll get at the, at the Cannes uh, Summit, in terms of moving the G20 um, to Mexico next year, I think there could be some possibility for Mexico to carry on the mantle of, of food security agenda, uh, particularly under the, uh, the uh, broader umbrella of, of development. And I think that as an emerging power, um, as a country with, that's largely agricultural in terms of its population and, and a country which has experienced hunger, um, it's, it's probably got more credibility to deal with these issues and perhaps the, the, uh, the other members might be willing to go along with perhaps more bold activities uh, to address questions like food price volatility, agricultural production, et cetera. And just as, a, as an example, at the, at the Pittsburgh summit, um, the G20 members agreed to endorse the um, pledges made at Alquila to um, provide $20 billion in funding for agricultural uh, assistance, for example. To date, only about 22% of that funding has, has come forward from, from the G20 members, and it, I doubt that we're much further than that. You know, I don't think we're going to see any big new announcements in Cannes for more money, but I think Mexico could use its own um, position to try and encourage countries to meet those, those uh, pledges that they made, especially because those pledges have to be made before 2012. Well, I think it'll be picking up the pieces after this period of crisis, and we'll need to focus on a big picture of, of growth and jobs and inclusion in some ways, because this is going to be a very kind of damaged, limping world uh, this time next year. Um, but at the same time, there will be unfinished business carried over from the French presidency in the areas of financial regulation, uh, economic, uh, imbalances and impediments to growth around issues also like trade uh, and uh, where there will also be a debate on to the extent of what extent the development agenda launched in, in Seoul, South Korea should be pursued, to what extent Mexico should bring in a new issue, either crime or, 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 or migration, both key issues of direct relevance to the Mexican host. So, you know, I think a lot to focus on, as always, the issue is to remember that the G20 uh, lives by one standard alone. Can it prove demonstrable, pr deliver demonstrable results? And if it's just a talking shop, however impressive the talk, uh, it, that's a failure as a summit. Well, I think uh, that the succession of uh, Korea, France and Mexico could prove uh, uh, a, good, a good team. Because um, uh, the Koreans, as I said, 
uh, made Seoul uh, as good a success as they could within a difficult monetary uh, context. Uh, they have introduced this uh, extremely important issue of uh, development, which will remain. Uh, which has been carried on by French and which will be uh, uh, taken uh, forward by the, the Mexicans. Uh, France has introduced a series of new initiatives. It's in, in, in the, the, the culture of President Sarkozy to explore ways to make proposals. Well, not uh, all his uh, uh, openings have been followed with, uh, with uh, uh, brilliant uh, developments, but it was a relatively dynamic, tonic uh, presidency. I think that the mind, in according to what we discussed at the CG uh, conference, I think that the Mexican uh, mind is rather to consolidate not to introduce new uh, flamboyant, brilliant uh, initiatives, but to consolidate what uh, we, we, we need to, to, to uh, implement carefully, to, to fix uh, minutiously. So it's, it's a good succession because we are moving forward and it's possibly after the, the, the French presidency a good moment to uh, take a, a, a while and say, well, where are we? Well, do you want to go in the future and in between fix uh, what we have done until now. I think the Mexicans have handled themselves tremendously well. Uh, they have been working with CG as an example now for the last almost a year. Uh, they've reached out to other countries, they've reached out to, uh, you know, to, to those that have to be involved in, in, in their focus and they know it's going to be a, the financial focus as well um, and they are going to be very, very well prepared. Uh, well, I think the, the Mexicans are conscious of the fact that uh, uh, time is short. Um, in the past, there's been as much as 12 months uh, between summits. In this case, there's going to be more like six months because the Mexican summit will take place uh, next, uh, next June. So it, it's, it's a very short uh, period of time. Uh, what has struck me is how open the Mexicans are to having advice from CG and at this CG organized event. Uh, they want to hear from other think tanks as well, but they're very open-minded. I won't draw any comparisons to others, uh, but I can't imagine uh, a country being more open to advice coming from people who have combined uh, a lifetime of experience and a lifetime of research on these issues. So for those of us uh, who have done that, it was a great opportunity to be able to communicate this uh, directly to people who are in senior positions in the Mexican government. Well, there's no, no question. I mean, the Mexican government itself, I think it's, a, it's an issue in the current uh, elections. Uh, uh, see the, maybe the, the opening up of, of Mexico a little bit more to uh, to external investment as an issue. Um, I, I think there's a real need to um, take seriously the urgency around issues like climate change, energy price volatility. I think it's clear uh, that the that minds are elsewhere. They're concerned with the resilience and the development of uh, the financial system uh, to ensure that we don't have a, another set of banking crises. These are all absolutely the right things to do. I think the point made, and I think I would repeat, is that these issues that play out maybe over decades are just as important, they deserve to be in the uh, policy space uh, now, um, as much as those things that we have to get right because we got things wrong in the past. So, yes, absolutely right uh, to, to address finance uh, economic issues. But these other issues are just important. We, if we don't address them, we are effectively uh, building up problems for the future which may overwhelm us. So I think leadership is about, I think, ensuring we bring those issues that need addressing into the attention, to the attention of policymakers, the public at large, so we can have a genuine, open, significant debate and understand the consequences of action or inaction. And if it looks like Greece is going to disappear beneath the waves two days before the next G20 summit, I guarantee you they're not going to talk about sustainable development or climate change or anything else. They're going to talk about what's on their minds. So I, I think it's kind of dangerous to speculate on what the Mexicans might put on the agenda. I know what they want to put on the agenda, but even the host government doesn't have that much control over it. 
My guess is people are still going to be fussing about the state of the world's financial system. This package that the Europeans have pitched together recently is pretty vague and it's going to need more work and the Americans still haven't come to grips with their budget deficit so that's going to be the top of the agenda. If the Mexicans had their way they'd want to talk about green growth. The whole idea of how do you combine two bandwagons together you know you obviously have to produce growth and jobs but how do you do it in such a way that it's greener than the more traditional development patterns. So that's what they're pushing that's what they'd like to do. There's a lot of work going on about green growth at the moment. The OECD's done a big report. The UN Environment Program's done a big report on, on what they call a green economy. Uh, McKinsey, the big consulting firm, has done all this work on the transition to a low carbon economy, what the costs are, what the benefits are, and so on. So this is a good big ticket economic issue that leaders could get their minds around, but it's also a good environmental issue. So you get you get the two parts of this agenda sort of joined up in a way that means things to normal people. It means different kinds of jobs, but it still means jobs. It means different kinds of transport options, but it still means decent transport options. So it's a, it's a new way of looking at the growth agenda. Mexicans would love to get, that, to get that into the center of the G20 discussions. I hope they succeed. Well, to some extent, of course, it's all going to be dictated by events. So it, in a large chunk, it'll depend on just what has happened in, in, in the euro area. Um, and as we mentioned, you know, to the extent that the G20 is going to be judged by this, if that crisis rolls on, and the indications are that it will, then uh, Mexico is going to find, which is the way that we're seeing in Cannes, that other issues are kind of crowded off the agenda, and we end up being judged on that, regardless of whether you want to or not. I mean, that said, I think sort of the, the comments that the ambassador made, you know, about Folk getting the G20 focused, you know, looking instead of trying to add more and more things on the agenda, which is kind of the natural temptation if you're the chair, but to try and step back from that temptation, instead think about, well, how do you assess what we've done? Um, how do we assess like, progress on where we've gone? That seems to me a very welcome way of thinking about things. Well, I think the Mexicans have a long history of being involved in climate change issues and green growth. So there is some uh, tradition from there from, for them to lead a, from and some considerable long-term interest. The problem is that it's a quirky problem, is that the, the Rio Plus 20 uh, summit is taking place, conference is taking place in early June of 2012. The G20 summit is taking place in mid-June, that is to say after the Green Growth Summit. So unless something happens at Con, which I'm not expecting, is there to push the Green Growth Agenda and to define it in a certain way as an economic agenda as opposed to purely an environmental one. I, I think, the, uh, I think the, the G20 summit in Mexico is going to be caught a little bit in the aftermath of the Rio Plus 20, which, which means that it's going to have to be either, either sort of fudge the issue because it's too soon after Rio Plus 20, the G20 summit in Mexico, or they're going to have to be very fleet-footed in terms of figuring out what were the gaps and failings of Rio Plus 20 and being able to say, well, we need to push on these fronts, which were either uh, misguided or else uh, avoided altogether in the Rio Plus 20 summit. So, so I think there is an opportunity there, but it's a little bit complicated because of the calendar, basically, which is boring. But on the other hand, it does drive the the potential for action here in a way that's uh, you can't really change it.